Well, good morning. Very warm welcome to St. Simon's this morning. Um, I guess for many of us, it's a little less than two years ago um, since we were gathered here to give thanks for the life of Barbara. And much of the service this morning um, is the same as Barbara's service uh, two years ago, uh, which is fitting because Barbara and Ian shared not only a great love for each other, uh, but a great love for the Lord Jesus as well. Um, And just as we did then, in a moment, uh, we're going to stand and we're going to sing our first hymn. And as we do that, um, the family uh, and the coffin are going to make their way in. Uh, The first um, song, the first hymn we're going to be singing is to God be the glory. Ian lived his life to the glory of God. And uh, and this is a fitting way to begin his Thanksgiving service. Uh, So please would you stand to sing to God be the glory. Please, would you take a seat? Well, uh, I want to welcome you again. Um, If we've not met, my name's Andy. I'm the vicar here at St. Simon's. And I want to welcome you on behalf of of Sharon, of Andrew, um, and the rest of the family who are extremely grateful for your support um, here today. Ian was a a huge um, and and well-loved member of the church family here at St. Simon's. Um, The very building testifies to the role that he played um, in the life of the church family here. Um, So uh, we welcome the family very much with with warmth and affection uh, this morning. And actually today in the church calendar, um, it's actually a day called All Saints Day, uh, which is a day when traditionally uh, we celebrate 
um, and give thanks for the lives of those who, who in Christ um, have gone to be with Christ. So how appropriate that today we get to celebrate um, Ian's life together. But as we do that, we do miss him greatly. And so it's right to give thanks, and it's right also to grieve today um, as we miss him amongst us. Let me begin by reading some words from the Bible. As Jesus wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus, he said these words. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let me lead us in some prayers. God of all consolation, your son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Look with compassion on your children here today in their loss. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let me lead us in a brief prayer of confession. Because as we remember the good times, uh, there will also be regrets uh, and things left unresolved. We simply wouldn't be human if there weren't. So let me lead us in this prayer of confession. As those created by a loving God, let us ask his forgiveness. For he is gentle and full of compassion. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I'm going to read a, a tribute now, um, which Sharon has asked me to read um, on behalf of the family. Ian David Moss was born the 6th of June 1944, which was D-Day, and always made his birthday very notable. Ian was born in Halifax, Yorkshire. He moved to Larch Street in Southport when he was a young boy. His parents bought the then newsagents on Hart Street Bridge and ran it until their retirement. Ian attended Norwood Primary School and then moved on to Mealscop High. He left school at the age of 15 to begin a long career of joinery, cabinet making and shop fitting. When Ian left school, he became a keen darts player, playing for the local Blue Anchor pub team. His darts partner turned out to be his future mother-in-law as she introduced him to Barbara, who was to become his, his wife and forever love. They were married in 1967 at Holy Trinity Church, Southport. They continued to live in Larch Street until they bought their own house in Warren Road, uh, which they lived in happily all their life. Son Andrew um, arrived in 1969 and daughter Sharon followed in 1971. Ian and Barbara became part of the St. Simon's Church family uh, when they were in their late 30s. Ian ran the Sunday school for a number of years at the previous um, St. Simon and St. Jude's uh, building, which is now uh, the Kinderworld Nursery. Um, Ian was very active in church life, Bible studies, groups, social activities. He created the Young at Hearts Club, trips out for retired folk, and was church warden here for a number of years. The church family w was a huge part uh, of Ian and Barbara's life, and they made lifelong friends here throughout the years. Ian was a keen lover of nature and wildlife. He was a very keen fisherman and from an early age was passionate about this hobby and was fishing up until only a few months ago. Um, he built some fishing pl platforms on the river near uh, Sharon's house and he spent many, many happy hours there fishing. It was his happy place. And only twice in 10 years did he fall in the water, uh, which was quite a concern because he couldn't swim. Ian became a granddad at the age of 57, uh, grandson Harry first, uh, followed by granddaughter Lucy shortly after. 
Ian and Barbara's life was complete, having grandchildren filled their hearts with joy. Ian and Barbara had all the amazing qualities that made them fantastic grandparents. They both played a huge part in Harry and Lucy's life and have given their grandchildren so many treasured memories to remember forever. Ian had some amazing qualities. How he cared for Barbara when she became unwell. He was an absolute rock. They were still madly in love after more than 50 years of marriage, always holding hands. Ian's world was saddened when his beautiful Barbara was diagnosed with leukemia in 2019 and sadly died the same year. Heartbreaking for both Ian and the whole family. But Ian was not one to sit around. His faith was strong and he wanted to live a full and varied life. He enjoyed days out and was planning holidays. And then COVID hit, and he spent a lot of time fishing and in the garden. By this time, Ian was 76 and still incredibly fit. Ian and the family enjoyed many long walks over the beautiful summer months around Churchtown Moss. And these were times that Ian really cherished. Ian's amazing talent of all things joinery, building, uh, related has been an inspiration to the many apprentices that he had over the years as well as to his family and friends. Ian has played a major part in the maintenance of church building, uh, this church building and the last. He's part of the fabric of the church building we sit in today. Ian started a new chapter in his life late last year, one of which was sadly short-lived. He and Sharon obtained an allotment in Moss Lane, church town, very close to Ian's house. Uh, this was a whole new network of lovely friends for Ian, uh, and he cherished his time and conversations there. He referred to his allotment friends as his allotment family. Ian and Sharon spent a happy summer there, creating lots of great memories, and he'll be sadly missed at Moss Lane. Ian's health rapidly deteriorated in February this year. Uh, completely unexpectedly, he was diagnosed with asbestosis lung cancer as a result of his work in shop fitting. Although the care and treatment he received from the staff at Clatterbridge were outstanding, he could fight the illness no more. Ian had no problem talking about dying. He was in no way scared. His faith was strong, and he was happy to be reunited with his lovely Barbara. In Ian's own words, he has gone to glory. That's a, a lovely and fitting tribute um, from the family to Ian. And in response to that, we're gonna stand and sing. And we're gonna sing um, a hymn, And Can It Be? Uh, it's, it's a hymn that, that puts into words the great joy that Ian has in knowing Christ. So let's stand and sing.
please do take a seat. And Ian will be delighted to hear that you're in such good voice. Um, when Sharon and I were talking about um, this service, I asked whether there was a Bible passage that was particularly meaningful um, for Ian. Uh, unlike Barbara, we didn't get the chance to sit down and to plan uh, the funeral together. But Sharon mentioned at some point it would be good to have Psalm 23 read, uh, the most famous of Psalms. And reading it again, it seems to be the perfect reading because it so beautifully encapsulates Ian's life, particularly over the last uh, two years. It speaks of a quiet confidence and trust in the Lord, even when life is turned upside down. So let me read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me read verse 4 again. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And wasn't that Ian's experience? Uh, particularly o over the last two years or more. As we've already heard in the summer of 2019, it was the beginning of Ian and the rest of the family's walk through the darkest valley, or traditionally read as the, the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, Barbara's illness, her death, life without her, and at the start of this year, his own uh, terminal diagnosis, the darkest valley. And yet, all the way through, Ian walked with remarkable confidence and calmness. Yes, there were, there were tears of grief and sadness, but did, his, did not his life speak those words? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That, that calm confidence in the darkest valley, in the valley of the shadow of death, uh, it embodied Ian. Uh, and we saw that in so many ways. Um, Easter Sunday this year, <laughs> uh, Ian came and stood at this, uh, this very lectern, and he spoke about the previous 18 months. It was one of those times when um, I had uh, questions prepared to ask him, uh, but he just sort of spoke. And by the end, he was preaching. Um, <laughs> he was taking my job from me. And, and he said about those previous 18 months, uh, well, he said, first of all, about the, the four months of illness um, of Barbara's and during the constant hospital visiting. He said this, that the Lord upheld me all the time. I was reading my Bible, and the Bible came alive. The Spirit worked through me. And al although it was the worst experience, I could say it was also the best experience. And then as he spoke about the time after Barbara's death, um, he said, The peace of the Lord was with me all the time. Uh, he never left me. Even on those dark nights when I was sat at home, sometimes I'd just turn the TV off for an hour and just talk to him. And he was there. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. That, that calmness and confidence in the darkest valley was seen through how he used his time. A, a commitment to use the time that he now had on his own after Barbara had died, not for self-pity, um, but to get to know his God better. Um, Sharon has discovered um, uh, some journals of Ian's um, detailing the, 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 numbers, the numerous Bible passages he read each day and the prayers that he prayed, the lengthy times he spent uh, with the Lord in prayer and in his words. 
is setting himself to, to read Christian books. All the books at the back are Ian's. And you're welcome to take one away, and I'll say more about that later. Um, he, he set himself to use the time to get to know God better. I'll never forget the last summer um, after the first lockdown. Ian was in the building, and he was helping me. You know, as, as Ian does. Um, uh, lug chairs around and, um, uh, and get the building set up for, for services to resume. And at the time, I and some other minister friends, we were trying to read through a book called Augustine, The Confessions. It's, it's a really hard read. It was written 1,600 years ago by this guy called Augustine, um, 4th century AD, and I'd given up. I thought, this is too hard. No way am I doing this. And we were chatting as we were moving the chairs. I said to Ian, Ian, what are you reading at the moment? <laughs> he says, oh, I tell you what, Andy, the book I'm reading is hard going. I've got to read each page about three or four times. Uh, but you know what? I'm keeping going. It's worth it. Me with a sinking feeling. Uh, what, what was it called, Ian? Oh I, oh, I can't remember, but it's by an old guy. A guy called Augustine, I think. <laughs> Me, by this point, knowing full well the answer. Um, it's not Confessions, is it, Ian? Yeah, that's the one. Have you read it? No, Ian, I've not. <laughs> it, his calmness and confidence, uh, which led him to, to get to know the Lord better. His calmness and confidence through the darkest valley, which was seen in his thankfulness, even in the face of his diagnosis. Two weeks before he died, asked how he was doing. He said, well, I'm tired, got no energy. Uh, but, you know, I'm so thankful. I spent hours just thanking God for all his goodness to me, and particularly for his family. Uh, the calmness and confidence through the darkest valley uh, w was seen in his great concern for others to know Jesus too, uh, to, to share something of Jesus. Um, he asked me to buy a load of these books to give away. And they're called Beyond the Big Sea. They're written by a Christian man, um, also with a, a cancer diagnosis, Hope in the Face of Death. And he asked me to, to buy these so he could give them out to people um, that, that, that he met. <laughs> Uh, and we, ha we held a day of prayer for Ian. <laughs> and all his prayer requests were, were really about other people knowing Jesus. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. And the question we're all faced with is whether you're a regular part of the church family here or, or not, is how? How was that Ian's experience? Even though I walk through the valley of the dark, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil. How was that his experience? How was he able to have that calmness, that confidence, um, in the valley of the shadow of death? Because actually, surely, wouldn't we all like to experience that as we walk through our own dark valleys? As many of us have walked through a dark valley in the last eighteen months, and one day all of us will walk through our own valley of the shadow of death. How can we have that calmness and confidence that Ian embodied? What's there in verse 4? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Ian didn't fear because he knew that Jesus was with him. And this wasn't just an, an airy fairy, um, vague, wishful thinking, a, a comfort blanket. This was the rock solid assurance that Jesus was with him by his spirit and that God the Father was for him. You see, Ian knew that Jesus was the shepherd of Psalm 23. That the Lord, Jesus, is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. See, Ian knew that Jesus was the shepherd of this psalm. A shepherd who 2,000 years ago walked his own darkest valley all the way to the cross. Jesus was the shepherd who spoke these words from John 10, which we read at Barbara's funeral two years ago. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd, the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. He knew Jesus as the good shepherd, the one who walked the darkest valley to the cross, who walked there in order to lay down his own life to bring the forgiveness of sins for his people. As wonderful as Ian was, and he was wonderful, he also knew that he wasn't perfect. He knew that he needed a saviour. 
uh, someone to deal with his own sin. And he found that saviour in Jesus, the good shepherd, the one who died for him. And with his sins dealt with, he knew there was nothing to separate him from God. That he could experience God's love and no relationship with him now and forever. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And with sins dealt with, a relationship with God in the present, he knew that he would be with Jesus forever. That the Ian would walk through the valley of the shadow of death and he would walk out the other side. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that is where Ian dwells now. Uh, because of Jesus, uh, the good shepherd, who he came to trust in all those years ago. Ian said a couple of months ago that before he came to know and trust Jesus um, in his 30s with Barbara, he was terrified of dying. He said he was terrified of dying. Uh, he had a reoccurring nightmare of just walking into the blackness of death. And he said he'd wake up shaking and sweating, terrified. But he also said at the moment that he became a Christian, the moment he trusted in Jesus, that fear of death disappeared. And it never came back. He went from the terror to the calmness and confidence because he knew Jesus was the good shepherd who'd laid down his life for him, who was with him. And Ian's calmness and confidence in the darkest valley can be ours, it can be yours. I mean, if I may, can I just speak to the regular church family here? Because sometimes we speak to, of Ian's calmness and confidence almost wistfully, uh, as, as though it's a Christian experience that we can't quite touch and own. But if Jesus is your shepherd, if he's the one who's walked the darkest valley, who's laid down his life for you, and is with you by his spirit, then that calmness and confidence is yours. You simply need to enjoy it. And Ian simply looked at Jesus deeply, through his word, spoke with him regularly, and depended upon him daily. The more you see of Jesus through his word, the bigger he becomes, the more you speak to him, the more you'll enjoy and experience the calmness and confidence that is yours through Jesus. Uh, his array of Christian books testify to that. If Ian's legacy is anything amongst us, and yes, we have a building in which he worked hard on, but if his legacy is anything amongst us, may it be that we make every effort to know Jesus in the way that Ian knew Jesus, so that we can walk with the same calmness and confidence in, in the valley of the shadow of death. That calmness and confidence is not just for the church family, it's for anyone. Anyone who will come to Jesus and trust him for their life and death. This is how Ian put it on Easter Sunday. I can remember when I came to know the Lord. The chap that was telling us about Jesus said, it's like a big open space between us and God. And the cross fits across it. And all you've got to do, said Ian, is accept Jesus and walk across. And Jesus will take you by the hand and lead you home. The moment anybody does that, that calmness and confidence is yours. And Ian ended with these words, uh, quoting the hymn we're about to sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my saviour all the day long. Well, may that be my story, may it be your story, because it was certainly Ian's story. We're going to stand and we are going to sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
please sit down. Let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks today for Ian, for the grace and mercy he received from you and shared among us, for all that was good in his life and for the memories we treasure today. We thank you for his life of faith, for the skills you gave him which he was able to use in his working life and in the help he gave to so many of us here. For his wonderful marriage to Barbara and the love and care he showed when she suffered ill health. We thank you for his membership of this church over so many years and the encouragement he gave to so many of its members. We thank you for his love for his family, for Andrew, Sharon, Harry, Lucy and others, and for the help he gave to them. We thank you for the courage he showed in his last illness and his sense of gratitude to all who cared for him. We thank you that his living faith in the Lord Jesus shone brightly for all to see and the way he sought to commend him to others. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all who love the Savior, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with Ian and Barbara that clearer vision when we shall see you face to face in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you pursue us with untiring love and dispel the shadow of death with the bright dawn of life. Give comfort to Andrew, Sharon, Harry and Lucy in their loss and sorrow. Be their refuge and strength, O Lord. Reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus, by dying has destroyed our death and by rising has restored our life. Be very close to all the family. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we've been reminded already, it's very appropriate that this funeral service is taking place on All Saints Day. And the following prayer follows that theme. Almighty God, we pray that encouraged by the example of your saints, we may run with patience the race that is set before us, as Ian did, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, so that at the last we may join with those we love in your presence, where there is fullness of joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging 
a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join in the words of the Lord's Prayer in our order of service. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, David. Um, please would you stand? So let us commend Ian to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. God, our creator and redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confidence of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Ian to your mercy. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to remain standing as we sing our final hymn, which speaks of that confidence. Uh, the confidence that Ian experienced in Christ alone, my hope is found.
Please would you take a seat? Well, all are welcome to join us for a brief service of committal at the, at the crematorium at Southport Crematorium. Uh, there will then be refreshments um, served back here in the hall, um, for which, again, you're all welcome to stay for. Or you may just want to stay around for, for the lunch and not come to the creme as well. That is absolutely fine. Um, you'll have found in your orders of service a little um, card that says, Share a memory. Um, it would be lovely if everybody could write down a, a memory of Ian um, to share with the family. Um, there's some pens at the back, and there is a little uh, box to put them in on the uh, table in the hall on the way out. Um, there are also an awful lot of these books, um, Beyond the Big Sea, Hope Beyond Death. And we, we had a load of copies uh, as, a, as a church. Um, anybody is very welcome to take one of those um, and just to explore uh, the calmness and confidence that Ian himself experienced. Um, again, they are all on your way out. Well, as we leave, um, uh, in a moment, um, I'm going to invite uh, the family um, to, to follow the coffin out. Um, and the rest of us will stand um, and we're going to sing the last verse of In Christ Alone again. So I'll invite you forwards. And then when we're ready, we'll stand to sing. <laughs> 